Good morning and welcome to our Sunday worship for Sunday the 7th of June, which is Trinity Sunday. And a special thank you to all those who've sent in photographs this week, which you're going to see later on in our song, Praise God, From Whom All Blessings Flow. But right now we're going to sing together and we're using a video from Matt Redman from last year's Thy Kingdom Come, 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, O My Soul. Hey, you all lead this today, okay? Here we go. Bless the Lord.
got some pictures to show you now today and I wonder if you can guess the connection between these pictures as they scroll across the screen. So let's have a little look. Are you getting the connection? Well, they all involve three. Three different colour traffic lights, three primary colours. What else did we have on there? Three blind mice, Goldilocks and the three bears, and a tricycle. So they're all reflecting the number three. And that leads in to our reflection and talk for today. We're going to be reflecting on the Trinity, God in three persons. And in a moment, we're going to listen to Neve bringing our Bible reading from uh, Matthew and listen to the last words of Jesus on earth, telling the disciples to baptise in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Just before we hear the reading, the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20, the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all the authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. When Fiona and I are asked to introduce ourselves, uh, we just say that we're husband and wife. We don't usually go into all the background of our relationship or try and explain it in any way. And that's just what we find with the Trinity in the Bible. It's often just assumed and stated rather than explained. Sometimes I think we want too much explanation, but it is just there. And in this passage from Matthew's Gospel, it just simply states uh, the words of Jesus go and make disciples of all the nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So that idea of God as three persons in one God is just assumed, it's taken for granted. And it recognises that the experiences that we have of God are linked to that God in relationship. Sometimes we use the picture of a triangle and we had a triangle earlier in our images, that triangle with three sides and three points, and sometimes then linking it with a circle to indicate that God is one, that we're not talking about three gods, but one God who we know in three persons. And it's hard to get our head around sometimes, but it is about God in relationship. And that's simply the way that we use those words, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We think perhaps particularly of a father-son relationship. And, and yet, of course, it's not meant to indicate that the father is uh, superior to the son or the son superior to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes when we try and explain that in a bit more detail, we use an image like this, which just shows us that those relationships of father, son, Holy Spirit are all equally God, but also different from each other, but they are all equals. And so even our imagery 
fails to really explain who God is or how we can know him in this way. And that's not unreasonable that God should be beyond our understanding. And yet those images help us to see something of the reality of the, our experience of God in our lives, that we can know God as a father and that he is there. We've seen him in concrete form, if you like, in the person of Jesus. And yet also we can experience him today in the work of his Holy Spirit in our lives. And so that experience of God in relationship can come to us and we can know that love of the Father and we can know the uh, peace that the Holy Spirit brings us and we can know the truth about Jesus. And those three things come together in our understanding of who God is. And as we uh, go on to try and bring new people into relationship with that same one God, then we look to them being able to develop and grow. And we'll say a little bit more about that later on. Well, now that we've been thinking about the Trinity a little bit, we're going to sing a song about that. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And during this song, you'll see the montage of all the pictures that we've been sent in as we hold up various words to do with uh, praising God, praise and glory and worthy. And uh, let's now sing along. Bless. 
I hope you enjoyed singing along with that. Wonder if you spotted yourself or some other people that you know uh, as we're in this lockdown situation. It's probably good to see some of the church family. And uh, Barney and Bella have also been finding it a little bit frustrating in lockdown. Let's hear from them now. Oh, Barney, are you ready for the quiz tonight? Nah, I suppose so, but we never win. That doesn't matter, Barney, but it's fun to see our friends. Oh, I'd rather see people in real life. I'm getting a bit fed up of only seeing our friends on a screen. It's not that much fun, Bella. Oh, Barney, you are being a bit miserable today. It's better than nothing. Mm, I guess. I even want to go back to school, and I never liked school that much. I know, and I want to go back to school as well. But you know we have to wait for the R rate to come down and stop the spread of coronavirus. What's an R rate? Well, it's about how many people get infected by every person that has the virus. If the R rate is below one, that's really good. But if the R rate goes above one, that means that everybody that has it infects more than one person and the virus keeps spreading much more quickly. So if one person infects two people, then they each infect two more. And very soon, that means one person has infected four people. That's very good, Barney. So if we don't meet other people, we can't infect other people and the virus stops spreading. Exactly. And the rate is reducing, which is good news. We've just got other people, we've just got uh, to wait a little longer. Thanks, Bella. Come on then, let's go and get our Zoom on. Okay, bye everyone. Bye. We've been hearing rather a lot recently about that R number and about bringing the rate of infection down. But actually, if we think about how we as Christians uh, are wanting to spread the gospel, then actually we might want to see not a, a low R rate, a reproduction rate, but a much higher rate because uh, we want to be sharing that good news with other people so that they too become Christians and they, in, uh, if you like, infect other people with that same uh, enthusiasm for following Jesus and that, that we so on, we grow and grow and grow. And that's part of what Jesus is talking about here at the end of Matthew's Gospel, when he gives that great commission, as it's been known, to go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that he commands. And those three actions that he gives there, going and baptising and teaching, are three things which are for all Christians to be involved in. Uh, we might say, well, uh, God doesn't send me to the far ends of the world. No, not necessarily. But uh, we're all called to go to our local community, to the people around us. And in fact, if we look at those who are sent overseas as mission partners, often they're the ones who have been active in their own communities first. In just the same way as Saul or Paul, as he became known, and Barnabas, when we read about them in the New Testament, they were Christians in Antioch and they were sent out from there. Uh, because they were already teachers and preachers in their local church and that was one of the reasons that they were set apart by the Holy Spirit to be sent out to go and teach in other places too. So first off, starting where we are and if, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, the disciples were actually called back to Galilee, to their home country, to the area that they knew best and as Jesus sends them out with that commission, they were already at home. And I think for us in lockdown, we might begin to think, well, actually, how can I share Jesus while I'm at home? Some of those ways will just be by phoning other people, talking to them, um, by making sure that we continue to keep in touch with others. And I think there's also that possibility of inviting people to watch these services, for example. Uh, you can point people towards that. And many people are much more open to uh, watching a service online than they would be to coming to church. So whereas in the past I've suggested you invite people along to church, well, why not invite them to watch these services? Uh, put a link on your Facebook page or just send that out in whatever uh, social media you use 
and invite other people to watch and say, this was great, why don't you watch it too? And then we want to make disciples. We need to have a concern for other people to become Christians. And actually, many people become Christians when they're younger. So we should have a special concern for our children and young people. Some figures that were released recently, and which uh, Hope Together have uh, released in a report that they had especially commissioned research. And they were asking about what age adults today in churches have become a Christian. And the results might surprise you. 40% of those who are Christians today said that they became a Christian under the age of five, 40%. A further 16% said that they became Christians by the age of 10 and a further 20% by the age of 18. Put those together and you can see that just over three quarters of Christians involved in our churches today became a Christian before the age of 18. That really is quite incredible. And it just shows us the value that there is in making disciples, teaching people young to follow Jesus and helping them to grow in that faith. And being a Christian isn't something that you leave behind when you leave Sunday school. Rather, it's something that goes on through the whole of our lives. And we need to keep growing, keep learning. Uh, disciple means being a learner. And so as we uh, grow as Christians, we learn more about the Bible, we learn more about prayer, we learn more about Jesus and our relationship with God, and we receive more of his Holy Spirit in us to give us the strength and the courage to do his work today. And then finally, it's about obeying Jesus' commands, because actually it's not just a question of what's up here in our heads, it's also a question of how we live and seeking to model our lives on the way that Jesus shows us so that other people will look at us and say, wow, they really are Christians, aren't they? Because of the way they behave, they're always looking out for other people. They're helping their neighbor, often at cost to themselves. They're looking for ways in which they can be a blessing to others around them. And so even in the just the general things that you do, you can be a blessing to others by listening to what Jesus says and seeking to live that way. But it's not just about thinking, well, then uh, other people will see because I'm such a good person and they'll know that I'm a Christian. Not necessarily, because there are a lot of good people in the world. What makes that difference is if we also talk about why we are the way we are. And sometimes it can even be talking about the way we've changed, but because of knowing Jesus and showing that change is possible within all our lives. And we should be striving to see that change in us. And that's what being obedient is about. It's about learning to follow more and more closely what Jesus tells us. And in that way, we'll fulfill that great commission. And we'll be able, even in this period of lockdown, to uh, allow the word of God to go out further and further into our world, to spread through the world, to make new disciples, and to help that R number to increase so that more and more people become Christians through our ministry. May God bless you as you seek to follow that in your lives. Amen. We thank you for the love and sunshine we have enjoyed over the last week and the opportunity to enjoy parks and gardens. Help us to appreciate the beauty of your creation. Inspire us to become committed to caring for our environment and to make changes in our lives to reverse climate change. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we thank you for the inspiration of, of your ministry on earth to help and support others. As we look around our friends and neighbours, show us where we can be an encouragement. Lord, you brought physical healing to many. We pray now for those we know who are ill. We think too of those who have been isolated for three months now and feel lonely. Help them to find comfort in your words. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for sending our Holy Spirit to be our comforter, our protector and our guide. Holy Spirit, give us willing minds to welcome you into our lives and follow your ways. In the times that we struggle, 
Give us strength in the times that we feel hurt. Give us comfort in the times that we feel anxious. Give us peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace of mind for those who are feeling anxious about work. We pray for wisdom for all those on the council and in leadership who are making plans to reopen schools, shops and other services. We pray for patience for all of us to continue to stick to the social distancing rules and not put others at risk. Renew in us a commitment to community and the well-being of everyone. And we pray just now, especially for those who feel they are badly treated and vulnerable, to find a new hope and peace in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So Lord, help us to be strong in our faith and give us that desire to share our faith with our friends and family so that we can see your church growing in the UK. We pray especially for those on PCC as they plan for the future of St Paul's, for St James and Greenhouse. Lord, refresh us. Teach us and direct us in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, accept our prayers. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So before uh, closing our prayers together with the Lord's Prayer, we've got another short prayer activity. So you might want to pause the, the video for a moment and gather yourselves a piece of paper, preferably rectangular, A4 if you can, a pen and a pair of scissors. And we're going to attempt to make a paper people chain. So we'll just give you a moment to go and collect those things and come back together. So hopefully you've got your bit of paper and pen and what we need to do is with you take your piece of paper and want you to make a fold along the short side at the bottom about five centimeters and then we're going to continue folding that over so we have what fold number one fold again to get number two number three Fold over again as we concertina it. Number four, last fold to bring you to the end to fold number five. So we end up with a bit like a, something like a bookmark and it has one opening side. So you want to cut into the side that not the, the side which opens out, but the, all the sides that are folded together. So if we're brave enough, we are then going to cut in from the top into those folds, making a semicircle to get the head coming out to the other side to begin the arm, cut back in, but not right to the folds, leave a gap so we make a body, turn your paper, cut down again, cut back out to the corner, to bring in the legs and then cut back up to make a triangle at the bottom and let's hope we have three people in our chain hopefully something like that if that's not worked don't worry maybe just draw three stick people or whatever on your piece of paper that'll be fine if you've managed to get the dance the uh, paper chain Fold that back up and on the first person I want you to write your own name. So we're going to write your name on that. And then I want you to think about uh, two people that you would really like to know the love of Jesus, to experience the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives and to commit to following God. So two people perhaps you're quite close to, it might be family, it might be friends, they may 
may be part of the, the, the uh, people you are praying for during thy kingdom come. But two people you would love to see become Christians. So you're going to write their names onto the other two people. So you now have you plus two more people. So hopefully and prayerfully in time, not just you will be a Christian, but two other people. There will be three Christians. So Lord, as you just hold up now your paper uh, people, let's just commit those people to prayer. So Lord God, we thank you for the faith that we have in you. Lord, give us the courage and the confidence to be bold enough to share our faith with our friends around us, particularly for, and just fill in the names of those who are on your sheet of paper. Amen. And so let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn today is one of my all-time favourites, How Great Thou Art. Let's enjoy singing together and praising God. Sings my soul, my 
my Saviour God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then shall I bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Saviour God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to Thee, how great Thou art. So just a few notices for this week. Uh, the PCC, that's Parochial Church Council for St Paul's met uh, last week and uh, they've showed a willingness to uh, keep producing these uh, video services coming out on YouTube each week. Lee Worley has kindly volunteered to uh, help to put those together. If there's anybody else you'd like to help as well, that'd be great. And uh, we will also be looking then to have people maybe just reading a short reflection, which will be provided for you. So if you'd like to be part of that, then do let Anne Hindle know. And uh, all of the regular things like the Bible reading and so on will also continue. Uh, some people have been asking me still about uh, giving during this time. And you can just put money in your envelopes if you're on the envelope scheme and save them all up for when we are able to come back to church again. It may be that by the beginning of July, uh, we will at least be able to use the church building. And uh, if you prefer to do so, you could just add up the amounts that you would have given and give a cheque for the whole lot at the end. And, uh, and you could also just deliver those uh, envelopes or um, cheques to Terry and Kath at their home, just put them in the box there, or deliver them to our home address while we're still here. And uh, they'll be processed in the normal way. You can also give online and uh, make just one-off donations and the links for that will be on screen for St Paul's and St James now. So thank you and do please if you'd like to make a donation towards our work, uh, it is all gratefully received. Our last Sunday is going to be Sunday the 5th of July and uh, our licensing in Congleton will be on the 22nd of July and that will take place at 7.30 in the evening. We're not sure yet what form the service will take, uh, but it looks like it's going to be done remotely with the bishop at his house and me at uh, my house, but the whole thing will hopefully be able to be uh, sent out live on Facebook. And so if you are interested in that, the links aren't available yet, but they will be later on, and we'll post something about that to you, uh, put, it on, put it on in the email at some point in the future, as soon as we know what's happening. And, and because we are only here for a few more weeks, we would like to make contact with as many people as possible over that time. Uh, so do drop us a line, drop us an email, give us a phone call, and, and we'll see if we can arrange a time when you can either pop round, obviously just to sit in the garden uh, if we have a nice enough day, uh, or we can come round to your garden if you prefer, and uh, we'll just be able to hopefully just meet up with people for a short amount of time each but we will try and make time for that over the next few weeks so do let us know if you'd like us just to call round and even if it's just to see you for a few minutes that would be great well thank you for being with us today as we've been praising god and learning more about the trinity and about how we can serve god in our lives i'd like to thank again all those who sent in their photographs for use in the song maybe we'll see that again in some future weeks and also special thanks to those who've uh, performed in this service, to, for Neve for the Bible reading, uh, for Edward, Holly, Izzy for helping with the prayers, and also again for Val for playing for us. And thank you all for watching. Do remember to send on the link to other people 
so they can come too. And let's now hear God's blessing for us. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you'll come back again next week. God bless.